The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello learners. Welcome to this learning program. I'm Tazo Jaran, your economics teacher of Upper Sea Art. Before we start this particular session, let's uh, look at the correction we had in the last session. This is a, the assignment we had. Let's correct the assignment. Four persons earn various incomes, as indicated in the table below. You can see the table. Person A earns 20,000 francs CFE. B, 50,000. C, 100,000. And D, 200,000 francs CFE. Now, these are the amount of taxes they are paying. The first person, A, didn't pay any tax. B, paid a tax of 4,000. C, 14,000. And D, 34,000 out of 200,000. Now, we are expected to complete this table by calculating this MTR, which represents the marginal tax rate, and the ATR, average tax rate in percentages. So, this is... Uh, what you are expected to do. First and foremost, let's look at the formula. The formula. Average tax rate is uh, given as tax divided by income times 101. While the marginal tax rate is a change in tax divided by change in income times 101. Now let's get to the table. Now our table, it shows that the marginal tax rate the first value here, obviously, marginal means is a change between between a, a B and A. So obviously, the first should be a dash. So there is nothing there. We we'll have a dash. Now the second, a change in income. Change in tax is going to be four thousand minus zero. That is four thousand. While income is fifty thousand divided by, or oh, sorry, fifty thousand minus twenty thousand which is 30,000. So it will take 4,000 divided by 30,000 times 100 on one. We're going to get 13,000, sorry, 13.333 as our answer in terms of percentages. Then the next 14,000 minus 4,000, that's 10,000. 100,000 minus 50,000, that is, uh, 50,000. It will take down 10 divided by 50,000 times 100. It gives us 20%. We'll do the same thing here. 34 minus 14. We have 20,000. 200,000 minus 100. It gives us 100,000. We'll take uh, the 20,000 divided by 100,000 times 101. It equally gives us a uh, 20%. Now let's go to the last column. Average tax rate. The first value here is going to be because it's a dash here. So the first one equally is going to be a dash. The second value is 4,000 divided by 50,000 times 101. That's going to give us 8 as an answer. Next is 14,000 divided by 100,000 times 101. Next gives us 14%. And finally, 34,000 divided by 200,000 times 101, it gives us 17%.
Now, let's get to the lesson of today. That's lesson 27, which is uh, based on the economic consequences of taxation. The economic consequences of taxation. Before we actually get into this uh, lesson, let us uh, see how the lesson the plan of the lesson looks like. We're going to start the lesson plan by looking at the objectives. Thereafter, we'll look at our previous knowledge and then problem situation. From there, we'll have lesson activity, application exercises, and uh, finally, we'll get an assignment. That is the plan of our work presently. Let's start the lesson objectives. By the end of this, lesson, students should be able to explain the positive and negative consequences of taxation. Equally, they should be able to identify the impact and the incidence of a tax. Previous knowledge, students can identify the various tax systems as well as, uh, as their, exa and their examples. We saw that in the last uh, lesson. Let's look at the real life situation. The researcher, or the researcher in your neighborhood, has observed that high income tax reduces incentives to work and thus leads to a fall in output. The researcher in your neighborhood has observed that high income tax reduces incentives to work and thus lead to a fall in output. That's our real life situation. Let's get the question. How can taxes be used to encourage hard work in your municipality? So by the end of this uh, lesson, we'll be able to have enough resources to solve this problem, to answer this question. The economic consequences of taxation. We're going to look at the consequences. We'll start with the effect on the distribution of income. The effect of taxes on the distribution of income. Progressive taxes redistribute income in favor of the poor. That's progressive taxes, especially income taxes. They tend to narrow the gap between the rich and the poor because a greater percentage is taken from the rich and a smaller percentage from the poor. So it reduces the gap between the poor and the rich. That is the effect. Regressive taxes widen the gap. Good example of regressive taxes will include indirect taxes. Now, indirect taxes will tend to widen or increase the gap between the poor and remix the poor, proud, poorer, and the rich, richer. Especially if it's a flat rate tax where everybody pays the same amount. The percentage paid by the poor will obviously be higher than. Uh, that for the rich. Effects on consumption. Both direct and indirect taxes reduce consumption. How is this done? When taxes are imposed, let's talk direct taxes, tax on income. What happens is that your disposable income reduces. And a reduction in disposable income implies a reduction in consumption. Indirect taxes will cause prices to rise. As prices are rising, it means consumption will fall. We'll be able to, the purchasing power of consumers will tend to reduce. Consumers will not be able to buy the same goods that they could, they could buy previously before the rise in uh, prices. Let's look at the effects on work. Direct taxes will tend to discourage hard work. This is um, especially in the case of income taxes and uh, when they become very high and progressive and corporation taxes. When they are high and progressive, they discourage workers from taking extra time or from accepting promotion in order to earn more because the more you earn, in this case, the more taxes you are going to be paid. So workers might tend to be discouraged. Indirect taxes, on the other hand, encourages hard work. Indirect taxes encourage hard work. 
How is that possible? Because indirect taxes are inflationary. Now, they will cause prices to rise. When prices are rising, consumers might be forced to take on extra time or extra work in order to have enough to maintain their same living standards. That means they are encouraged to work hard when indirect taxes are imposed and discouraged when direct taxes are imposed. The effect on the general price level. Indirect taxes are inflationary. That is, it cause prices to rise. When indirect taxes are imposed, let's take an example of a custom duties, a tax levied on goods entering a country. When they are imposed, the price of the goods, obviously, depending on the elasticity of demand of that particular commodity, producers will shift because an indirect tax represents an increase in cost of production, which causes supply to fall, consequently leading to an increase in uh, prices. So it will shift the burden to the consumer through high prices, everything being equal. On the other hand, direct taxes will instead tend to reduce prices. Direct taxes, because when direct taxes are imposed, for instance, income taxes, consumer disposable income, disposable incomes will fall, will decrease. When it falls, it means aggregate demand in the market is going to fall. Purchasing power reduces, pushing down prices. Let's look at the effects on saving. How do they affect saving? Both direct and indirect taxes reduce saving. Direct taxes, like an income tax, will cause a reduction in disposable income, your personal disposable income, thereby reducing disposable income is income that is either meant for consumption or saving. So if disposable income is reduced, everything being equal, saving will fall. On the other hand, indirect taxes will lead to an increase in prices. And when prices are rising, consumers are going to spend more of their disposable income to consume. And consequently, less will be spent on saving. That explains why saving will fall. Let's take the effect on investment. Taxes reduce investment for both nationals and foreigners. It is obvious that high heavy taxes, especially on investment profits, will tend to increase cost of production, especially uh, increase cost of production, discourages uh, investors, and consequently, will lead to a fall in investment in the economy. The effects on, on employment, or employment. Effects on employment. Actually, we're going to see that unemployment will increase. High taxes increase unemployment. Why will unemployment increase? Because the investment might be discouraged or will be discouraged, everything being equal. Our investment is discouraged. Obviously, more persons are going to find themselves unemployed. When there is investment, workers are employed. Fall investment means that less workers will be employed or some workers might even lose their jobs. Now, we're going to look at something different. We'll take an impact of the tax. Remember the objective, we have to look at the impact and the incidence. We'll start with the impact of the tax. I will talk about impact. It is the initial resting place of the tax burden. Initial resting place of the tax burden. It falls on the person or institution being assessed for taxation. It refers to the person who actually pays in the money to the state treasury. That is, the impact now is, is the impact is on the person who can be legally sued if that particular tax is not paid. Then we'll go now to the incidence of the tax, which is the final resting place of the tax burden. The final resting place of the tax burden. 
It refers to those who suffer a reduction in their real income resulting from the imposition of the tax. Now, in this case, an incidence of a tax uh, of a direct tax will be borne entirely by the taxpayer. The taxpayer cannot shift the incident. He cannot shift it to another person because it's a direct tax. But an incidence of an indirect tax can be shifted to the consumer through higher prices. Though it depends on the elasticity of demand for the tax commodity, demand and supply, which we are going to see later. Shifting the incidence of the tax, like I've already explained, the firm's ability to shift the incidence of a tax depends upon the price elasticity of demand for and supply of the product. So we're going to look at uh, situations where demand is elastic, inelastic, perfectly elastic, and so forth, and how the tax burden could be shifted or the incidence could be shifted between consumers and their producers. Let's start with a situation where demand is elastic. Now, we're going to get uh, an illustration or sketch. When demand is, of a product is elastic, assuming that supply to have elastic demand, That's the man that is elastic. And see me supply is inelastic. This is the original, original situation where the original demand curve, you can say the original supply curve. That is a shift in the supply curve to the left. Why? Because of an increase in the cost of production due to the imposition of the indirect tax. We have price here. We have quantity this way. Now, let's take this original price, the minimum price. Take another, I call this one P1, P2. This gap here, this gap represents consumer share of the tax. Let me put this to the IC. This other one represents the user share of the tax. So if we look very well, we'll see that the gap for the consumer share is very small. That for producer share is big. So the conclusion here is that when the demand for the commodity is elastic, producers are going to pay a greater percentage, while consumers pay a smaller proportion. Why is it so? This is because producers are afraid to significantly increase the price because if they increase the price significantly the quantity demanded will fall more than proportionately and they probably is going to make losses so in this case they will only increase the price slightly because the money is elastic now let's take a different uh, situation when demand of a product is inelastic when demand is inelastic it's a different diagram When it's inelastic, this is what we have. We still draw a normal, we have our quantity this way. We have the price. Demand inelastic means that the demand curve is, is steep. So assume that the supply curve is elastic. So this supply falls. Why? Because of an increase in the cost of production. Consequently, it leads to an increase in price. So that price is going to increase. Okay. In the former diagram, this gap was described as consumer's share of, that's consumer's tax per unit. Take it down to the amount. This is uh, producer's uh, share of the tax. See so that the producer's share of the tax in this case is very small, while that of the consumer is larger. This is simply because the producer knows that 
if they significantly increase the price of the commodity, consumers will still demand almost the same quantity, though the, 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 the reduction in their quantity demand is going to be very small, very insignificant. So producers will be encouraged to increase the price of the product. That is why, in this case, the consumer bears the greater tax than the producer. As you can see, the tax to the consumer is far more than that of the producer. Now let's get a situation where they are sharing the tax burden equally. That is when demand is unit elastic. The burden is equally shared between the producer and the consumer. Let's illustrate that one. That means the slopes of the curves are supposed to be the same to be able to achieve that situation. So we're supposed to take the slopes. Okay. So our price this way. Our quantity is mounted as supply. Take the supply curve and supply. And then we take our demand. As mean that the slopes are the same. The slopes are the same. We expect to have a pretty 50% share of the tax burden. You see how the slopes, you see by slight bend. Okay. And not well, just a sketch. That's okay. Now I expected to this gap, the gap from this as the higher price, across the price will increase. This gap is supposed to be the same as this other gap. The gap, look, if you look closely, you see the gap, they are almost the same. The gaps are almost the same. Why? Because the slopes of the curves are the same. So when the elasticity is the same, it gives us uh, a situation where the consumers are sharing the same amount of tax like the producer. A tax of 50 francs will be shared 25-25. Now let's take another uh, scenario when demand is perfectly elastic. Now when demand is perfectly elastic, we expect producers to pay all the tax. So we want to incur the, all the tax burden because they know that it increase the price even by the slightest margin. Consumers will not buy. So the price will not change. But they will want to pay all the tax. So perfectly elastic, that's when the demand curve will jump down. And the price here. Yeah. We we'll have quantity. This is our supply. Normal supply curve. Pause. That was the original equilibrium. That was in the equilibrium. I knew equilibrium. All this gap here is consumer share. So the price actually will not change. The same commodity at the same price, but Paying all the tax because if it's increased the price, those a bit consumers are not going to buy. That is the issue of perfectly elastic demand. Now let's uh, let's producers bear the tax burden alone. As of as we've seen, this gap represents producer share. Here there's no consumer share. Now let's take uh, the last case where demand is perfectly inelastic. When it's perfectly inelastic. This is what we're going to have. Perfectly elastic demand curve, that's when demand is uh, zero. Turn to that CC. Perfectly inelastic demand. We will introduce our supply curves. This was the original equilibrium. Now it is a new equilibrium. Maybe that's all this gap. 
represent consumer share. So the price has actually just increased by the full amount of the tax. The price has increased by the full amount of the tax. All the tax is paid is paid by the consumer. So in this case, the producer is very confident that if it increases, no matter how it increases the, the price of the commodity, consumers are going to buy. That is why you shift the entire burden to the consumers through higher prices. So consumers bear the burden alone. Okay, let's uh, now try to get a record of what we've done in this uh, session. Recall what we've done. We started by looking at the economic consequences of taxation. We saw the effects on distribution of income. And we saw that income uh, will be distributed evenly or equally in a case of progressive taxes as the gap between the poor and the rich will be narrowed when it's progressive and it will be widened when it's regressive. Regressive, the poor suffer more than the rich when it's regressive. When it's progressive, the rich will suffer more than the poor. We equally saw the effects on consumption. Consumption is, is going to fall, both for direct and indirect taxes. We, we saw the effects on general price level. Price level, for indirect tax, the price level will increase, but the direct tax will reduce because of a, a reduction in income, disposable income, consequently, a reduction in purchasing power and the aggregate demand. Effects on saving, saving will equally fall, both for direct and indirect taxes, that was explained. Effects on investment, investment will fall for both nationals and foreigners. Effects on work, direct taxes will tend to, it's a disincentive to hard work, discourage, discourages hard work, while indirect taxes actually instead uh, motivate people to work hard since they are struggling to put in extra work to maintain the same living standards. We look at the impact of the tax, which refers to the effect of the tax on the person legally responsible for paying the tax. We saw the incidence, which is where the final burden of taxation rests. And we saw that it depends on the elasticity of demand of the tax commodity. But when we look at some exercises, we start with uh, the first one. If the elasticity of demand is unitary, the burden of indirect tax is borne a, by the consumer alone. B, more by the producer than the consumer. C, equally by the producer and consumer. D, more by the consumer than the producer. Of course, you uh, remember very well, when it's a unitary or unit elastic, it is shared equally. So, equally by the producer and consumer, C should be the best option. C is the best option. Exercise two, in which situations will the shifting of the tax burden be impossible when the producer is making no profit, that's A, when the demand for the product is perfectly elastic, B, when the demand for the product is perfectly inelastic, that's C, then D is when the good is a necessity. Of course, it is B because B talks of when the demand for the product is perfectly elastic. We saw that it was impossible for the producer to shift the tax burden when it's perfectly elastic. So B is the correct answer. Uh, three, the final burden of a tax is referred to as A, impact of the tax, B, tax acceptance, C, tax base, D, incidence of tax. Of course, the best answer is uh, the incidence of tax, which is uh, D. We are talking about the final burden. Well, the initial burden we have been talking about the impact. So, incidence of tax. We're going to now take down this assignment in our books. How may the imposition of a tax affect A. The distribution of income B. Prices and C. Consumption How may the imposition of a tax affect A. The distribution of income B. Prices C. Consumption Okay, let's look at uh, the references which uh, I consulted, you check this, grants, SG 2003, Stanley's Introductory Economics, the other is Barry Harrison, 1992, Gerard, uh, Pastor Gerard, and the race. Okay, 
this is where we're going to end uh, this lesson. Our next session is going to be on notions of budget. Manetambia niña ne injo biayen